Hi Booktube and welcome to a new video. This is a tag video. This is the Let's Get Shameless tag which was originated by the Weird Book Book Club and he tagged me and just about everyone else on the Booktube um, which is possibly why there isn't a question at the end saying tag other Booktubers because they're all on uh, this wonderful tag. Um, and it's inspired by this being uh, Reading Pride Month. Um, so it's all about shamelessness. So prompt one Shamelessness personified. Talk about a book, character or writer who you feel best embodies what it means to be shameless. Well, there's two meanings in the word shameless, really, or, or certainly in how we use it idiomatically. One is the sort of notion of an extrovert, someone literally without shame and how they sort of project themselves in, in public. Uh, but the other is a sort of uh, a sort of more ignoring of social mores in your uh, decisions and actions rather than your personal display and it's more that I'm going to talk about so there's a the second novel by Steve Toltz an Australian author called uh, Quicksand that's one of the most shameless characters I think I've ever seen in it he's called Aldo and he's a, a sort of uh, a dreamer and an entrepreneur who has all these sort of schemes and plans and get rich ideas none of which come to fruition a lot of them are slightly shady um, Basically, he's always screwing up. He is a screw-up of a character. And he sort of expects his best mate, Liam, to always bail him out of trouble, be that sort of, you know, financial trouble or personal security trouble, because Aldo has no sort of sense of, sort of personal space. or And because he has no sense of personal space, he doesn't have a sense of sort of personal danger and the need for caution. And the best image I can use to describe the relationship between... Uh, uh, these two, but also other sort of side characters, uh, is one that I'd actually apply to my late father as well. So, you know, he would be cycling on a bike, very wobbly because he can't really ride it, and he'd go through a mud patch, and everyone else is running along the side in case he falls off, you know, to, to stop him hitting the ground because they all get spattered in mud, and he sails through sort of um, absolutely spotless. Um, so that is, he's shameless because he expects. Liam to ride in on his white horse and save him each time. So it means he has no, no sort of concept of restraint uh, of his own decisions, his own actions. You know, there are no limits because he knows he's always going to get bailed out. So that is my shameless character, Aldo, from Steve Toltz's novel Quicksand. Two, shameless suck up. Talk about a book outside your comfort zone that you read mainly because you appreciate or admire the person who recommended it. Well, this sort of about 80% fulfills the notion of outside my comfort zone because, you know, I'd seen this talked about on Booktube. I hate the cover. I, you know, I still hate the cover. But I saw Liv Hooper, uh, who is a long-time Booktuber with a big follower, but she's sort of taking a break from Booktube, so come back soon, Liv. And she's also a bookseller. She works in Waterstones. And she sort of rhapsodised about this book and sort of won me over. Uh, and when I read it, apart from that, I loved it. In the, I think it was my number four or five book last year in my top ten. It's beautifully lyrical. Uh, and, you know, it's a lyrical dystopia. And, and that's one of the other reasons out of my comfort zone. I'm a bit bored of reading dystopia books, really. But this totally won me over through its language, through its voice. And that's all down to Liv Hooper. Uh, I'm, I will say that I'll post the link to a video I made last year I think yeah definitely last year called thank you booktube because I'd hit a, str a streak of about eight successive books that I was reading and all been recommended to me by other booktubers and I didn't know their existence they weren't all new releases so I remember Dane Reed had recommended me a sci-fi classic called uh what was it called uh can't remember <laughs> but if you watch that video oh uh Babel 17 that's right um, but there were, as I said, about eight books recommended by different booktubers. So uh, I'll post a link to that. Prog 3, shameless plug. Talk about a book or writer you'll recommend to anyone you meet because they need more attention, damn it. Well, originally, I was going to sort of talk about my favourite author, who is Ben Marcus. Uh, these are his books that I have, and this book in particular, The Age of Wire and String, uh, is my all-time number one book in my top ten booktube 
books tag uh, that Jason from All Blues Chapter and Verse is about to sort of bring uh, the curtain down on and announce the results of Booktube's favourite reads. This won't be in it. So I'm convinced this is the only person. This is I'm the only person who would have voted for this book. Two books of short stories uh, and the Fame Alphabet, very wonderful book. So you know, I, I love Ben Marcus. He's my favourite living writer. I will bang on to anyone that they should read him, except the notion of because they need more attention, damn it. Well, I wouldn't say Ben Marcus is sort of hugely well-known, but an author who I think does need uh, more attention for the simple reason he can't get published. He's American. He can't get published in America. His books are fairly hostile to America. Um, and he's, one again, one of my favourite authors. But he doesn't... This was his first book that I read called Atta, and I've got a dedicated video to it. And it's about Mohammed Atta, who's the ringleader of the 9-11 uh, terrorists who flew the planes into the Twin Towers. And this is a searing book inside the mind of, of just such a person. It's told from two different narrative points of view. One is Atta's own voice, and the other is when he's referred to he. And it's a very, very, you know, apart from the fact it's a sort of searing psychological study of this guy, it's also very artistic and literary in, in its devices and stuff. So this is my introduction to Kobe. I thought, you know, this guy's a serious writer, literary writer. And then I came to his other books, um, including Only Americans Burn in Hell, uh, I Hate the Internet, which is the one you're most likely to have heard of, uh, The Future Won't Be Long, and uh, this one called, brilliantly, if you won't read, then why should I write? Which is a series of um, transcripts of private videos of celebrities where uh, they might be drug taking or having sex. And they're so sort of vain that, you know, they record themselves on video. And of course, these things get out into, into the public domain. And, and Kobeck has sort of transcribed them. And at the end of each chapter on, on each, each celebrity is their rap sheet, you know, the actual crimes they've committed in real life. It's a very, very subversive book about celebrity. Um, I Hate the Internet and uh, Only Americans Burning Hell are searing. They're sort of social comedy satires, really. They're not novels. But, you know, the, the Atta was a novel. These are not novels in a way that that's not a novel either. They're, they're, they're just very funny, very entertaining about our modern sort of uh, lives online. Uh, and in between them, he wrote this, The Future Won't Be Long which took two of the characters from I Hate the Internet, which is not a book about characters. As I say, it's not really a novel. But it took two of them and put them into another setting and it sort of extended their story of the New York club scene of the 80s. Uh, and this is terrible because despite Atta's brilliance, I've come to the conclusion that Kobeck is not best when he's trying to write novels. He's best when he's just doing these, you know, searingly funny, concussive social satires. Anyway, so the reason I say he needs more attention because he had huge amounts of attention after I Hate the Internet. But this is his latest book, came out this year, and he can't get it published in America. This is published by Serpent's Tale in the UK. So, you know, this guy is not being censored directly, but the American market has conspired to not publish his stuff. So, you know, I'm going to support Jarrett Kobeck because he's a wonderful writer and ought to be read in America. Um... Four, shameless snob. Talk about a text that speaks to you very sorry, that speaks to your very, very particular interests. Stuff so obscure that it almost feels like the book was written just for you. Well, I can't keep this to one book because I've got lots of books that applies to, but no one book covers them all. So for example, Cambodia, a book for people who find television too slow by Brian Fawcett, which is a book about Cambodia under the Khmer Rouge, which is one of my obsessions. Um, this is a very subversive book. It's quite a postmodern book in that there's short stories and then sort of underneath each, sort of as if they were footnotes, but they're not because they're coherent texts, is a sort of history of colonialism in, in Southeast Asia. It's a terrific book. I mean, I really, really enjoyed that. So Cambodia, uh, one of my obsessions. Uh, William Gaddis, A Gape Agape, a book written as Gaddis was dying um, and he was desperate to complete it before death. And that's kind of what this book is. It's an author in a, his hospital bed uh, trying to, you know, get that book out before he dies. And death is one of my obsessions. It's my current work in progress is on death. So this is one of the unusual books. It's first person death. It's not talking about the people left behind. It's not talking about grief. It's talking about the fear of death in the subjective eye of first person, uh, as is mine. 
Uh, and this is a terrific, terrific little book. And very sad that he died, you know, soon after completion. Slumberland by Paul Beatty, not a great book, but it, you know, it's set in Berlin, an American uh, expat living in Berlin. And uh, there's a scene where he passes, he walks past um, Blixer Bargeld and his Japanese girlfriend. And uh, Blixer Bargeld is the lead singer and guitarist of uh, several bands, but the most, uh, the one he's most associated with is called Einstürz and de Neubauten, who grew up in Berlin when it was still a divided city. And they were very much about their music, was very much about the architecture of a divided city. And, you know, they didn't have drum kits. They would play found objects like shopping trolleys or even part of the, you know, the, the, the uh, security railings on the autobahn and, and things like that. So, you know, the book is fearful, but Blixer Bargeld gets a mention. I can't imagine there's many novels in which Blixer Bargeld gets um, a mention. Oh, I should say that I should say you know about one of my favourite groups. And uh, Art Noise, which is how I would describe their music, is my favoured musical genre. And Scarlet Thomas's Our Tragic Universe. Now, this is strictly an obsession of mine in, in terms of, of literature itself. So this book, and there's a dedicated video to it. Uh, I will post the link to that. Uh, I don't have a commonplace book, but there are three, three snippets, sections, quotes, whatever, from this book that I have saved in a document on my laptop. So it's a, a sort of commonplace book, just, just dedicated to, to this book. And it's it's basically saying, well, you know, we have these sort of Aristotelian, in the West, we have these Aristotelian structures of our stories with beginnings, middles, ends. And, and you know, other parts of the world, storytelling isn't like that, isn't structured like that. And this, this is a, a quest for a non-Western mode of storytelling. And any incident that happens to the characters in this book happens off page if she doesn't tell you about it all you get are the reactions of the characters afterwards a very subversive book it's not going to be to everybody's taste you know people are going to read this and go well, where's the plot where's the story that's the point there isn't one but i love it shame five shameless fan Talk about a book or writer you know you'll keep returning to, despite the fact that there are literally millions of other things you could be reading. Well, I have a problem with this because I don't really reread books. And the concept of constantly returning to a book is, I, it just doesn't compute. I mean, no book has had its effect on me since I was uh, I first started reading. And when, when the first book, I, proper book I ever read was Albert Camus' uh, The Outsider. It's only about 120 pages long. And I did used to read that every, once a year, every year, between the ages of about 14 or 15 and 25. But I no longer do that. Um, but a book, I won't return to it in the sense that I will go back and reread it. But I think about this almost every day. This is not a novel and other novels by David Markson, which is a really subversive book. I talked on the Paper Trail podcast about it. I will post a link to that. So I'm not going to go into detail about it now. But... This is not a novel, you know, it makes, as, a, as an author myself, this makes me consider and contemplate exactly what we mean by fiction and what a novel is. And, and it, it just, it, you know, there's so much to get to grips with in, in the concepts that he elucidates through his fictional novel. Brilliant. Six, Shameless Hater. Talk about a trending or popular book or author you did not enjoy and you don't care who knows it. Well, you know, <laughs> the list is very long, but uh, a book I've hated so much I've already unhauled it, even though I only bought it and read it in February, and I think it hasn't been out that long. And that is Sarah Moss's Ghost Wall. I've got a dedicated video to it. If you want to see Bile and Spite, um, I'll post the link. Shameless Seven and Final, Shameless Flirt. Talk about a book that really turned you on in that dot, dot, dot special way or touched you emotionally in a way that others might find embarrassing. Well, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Skin Lane by Neil Bartlett uh, is that type of book. And before I get into it, Neil Bartlett very easily could have been that, that prompt about, you know, who's an author that you would talk about to anybody saying he deserves more more uh, interest. So Neil Bartlett is one such author. But anyway, so this book is um, set in, in Leather Lane in London, which used to be the heart of the leather cutting trade for making leather jackets and things like that. And the two of the three main characters, oh, in fact, all three main characters work in, in this 
in one of the, uh, I don't think you call them factories, because it's all done by hand, with hand knives, uh, when this book takes place. Uh, there's a, a young guy, uh, his fiance, and his foreman, who basically uh, has an unrequited crush on the young guy. Um, and the, the descriptions of cutting the leather, of that sort of fleshy materiality, contrasted with you know his fantasies about flesh, about this unobtainable guy's flesh. It's brilliant. It, it's the best fictional treatment of desire that I've ever come across. And for me, even though it's not my sort of gender sort of alignment, I just found this book so... It just blew me away with how it portrayed desire. So there you have it. There are my books in the... Um, Shame, let's get shameless tag. Thanks very much to the Weird Book Book Club for tagging me in. Uh, as I say, there's no point tagging anybody because everyone I know is tagged. Okay, till next time. Thanks very much.